On today's episode of the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast, I'll be talking to you about stories. I might tell one or two as well, but primarily I'm talking about stories and why we use stories in coaching and what's the difference between using coaching stories and hypnosis stories. How do you use stories in hypnosis that's different, perhaps, from using stories in coaching? You are listening to the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast, a show devoted to uncovering the systems and the secrets that set the best apart, where you learn how to take your coaching clients to the next level, while you grow the coaching practice of your dreams. So sit back and relax, or sit up and get excited. Either way, you might want to pay attention. This could be important. Hey there. So yeah, stories. We've been telling stories since we've been human beings, right? Stories are ancient. Stories may be the first art form, if you will. It's how they communicated our ancient ancestors, how they communicated wisdom and entertained each other around the campfires late at night. Um, it had multi, multiple uses for it. And for a good reason, stories stick, right? Stories stick with you. Like I've used this example before, but you know, if I said to you something like, you know, the tortoise and the hare, you know, you, if I said that example, you'd say, oh yeah, right. Yeah. Slow, slow and steady wins the race. Got it. You know, and that story is like 2,500 years old. Aesop presented that story, wrote it down at least. There's debate just by the way, whether Aesop wrote the stories, primarily he didn't. He was probably like a griot who went around telling stories, but he in fact wrote them down, which is why they're now his, Aesop's fables. But um, but we remember them. You know, that's a story that has been around for 2,500 years. Kind of amazing that we would have, you know, a collective remembrance of what that story means. And there's so many like that. We remember stories. Our, our brains are are wired that way. And they're interesting. They're fun. They, they capture the imagination. One of the tr differences between Ericksonian hypnosis and traditional hypnosis is that Erickson told stories. And he didn't do a thing where you watch the watch, you know, you swing the watch back and forth to capture the imagination or to capture the attention. He didn't have that swirling disc thing like the James Braid fascination device. He told stories. That's how he captured imagination. That's how he captured your attention, by telling you a story. And it works. And we can do that in coaching as well. Many times, many times in my coaching practice, if you've ever <laughs> done any coaching with me, you'll know this very well. I tell stories. I tell a lot of stories because they're meaningful and they have a way of imparting that meaning that person will then remember. And I wanted to talk about a distinction between the stories that are told in, in hypnosis primarily versus told, uh, stories told in coaching because there can be a difference. It doesn't have to be necessarily. You can do both. You know, you can do a hypnotic story in coaching. I often do because I'm a hypnotherapist and I do coaching, so I blend them together sometimes. But a lot of times in my coaching practice, as Thomas Leonard used to say, it's a, it's a, it's a conversation. You know, Thomas Leonard is the founder of coaching the whole field is you know because of his his creativity and creating the coaching field back in the 90s um i learned from him early on you know we was all i only met him one time actually um first uh, i'd never heard of him before i met him i was teaching as we were both of us presenting at a conference and um i sat through his presentation I was fascinated by this concept of coaching. Nobody had ever heard of this before. And I thought it kind of silly, you know, softball coaching, baseball coaching. Yeah, okay. But personal success coaching, life coaching, that doesn't make any sense. Nobody would ever do that. <laughs> that's that's how, what a visionary I was. And just, but uh, but I found him so fascinating. I signed up for his, his online or on telephone course. And just uh, coaching one, two, three, and various things, you know, just telephone teaching, learning. But the way he described things back then, it was always as a conversation. You're always having a conversation. You talk about an issue, you talk about things. And that's what coaching has been for me in a lot of, lot of ways. 
as distinct from doing NLP processes or hypnotic inductions or whatever, that the coaching is kind of a co-invention. We are doing this together. As Dave Buck has just said, you know, we're playing this game together. We're co-creating. And I love that. I think that's really accurate. I think that's the way it works best. So a lot of times in, in coaching, when I tell a story, I will then say, so how does that mean to you? And how does that, how do you think that plays out in what we're talking about here? And we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll have a conversation about it. And we'll say, how does that story, you know, impact you? What will that mean for you? How will you change your behaviors as a result of it? You know, so we really get into sort of the, the weeds of, of what it's all about. In hypnosis, it's rarely the case that we do that. In hypnosis, almost always, at least in Ericksonian hypnosis, let me put it that way, um, you tell the story and that's it. You might look like you get, you might have a you know hypnotic look on your face or whatever, but you know, look of great expectation. So mm, you know what that means, don't you? But you don't explain it. You don't explain it. My teacher, Dave Dobson, used to say kind of like this. He said, the best metaphors, the best stories that you tell somebody in a therapeutic situation, therapeutic metaphors, the best metaphors are the ones that the person almost understands, that is just outside their conscious awareness. So why would that be? Why do you think that is? And by the way, that was a story, wasn't it? So sometimes stories can be in the guise of, my teacher once said to me, this is what you do. You know, so stories don't have to be once upon a time, like Aesop's fables. It doesn't have to be the story about a, a farmer and a rabbit or something like that. It doesn't have to be that sort of story. It can be an anecdote. Milton Erickson's stories were often, often about, I had a client once who, you know, and he tell a story about a client in a similar situation to the client he's working with now. So why would you not? explain the story. Because in hypnosis, the idea of hypnosis is, right? The idea of hypnosis is that we have a conscious mind and we have an other than conscious mind or unconscious mind. As a little bit of an aside, Dave Dobson called it the other than conscious mind. He thought it was more accurate terminology than unconscious or subconscious because it's not unconscious. You're not knocked out. And to call it subconscious means it's below the level of consciousness. And it's not necessarily, and it's not necessarily lower than or less than your conscious mind as if your conscious mind is better in any way, shape or form. So other than conscious was his more accurate description as he called it. Um, Erickson often used the word unconscious. So I, when I talk about Erickson stuff of things that I think of from that vantage point, I often use that term. But we do have a conscious mind and an other than conscious mind, don't we? Everyone does. The, the idea of hypnosis is that our conscious mind can be what's getting in our way. We have a conscious critical mind that, that keeps us sort of in a way of thinking that's a, a specific kind of you know, bound up way of thinking. So we want to bypass the conscious mind and get to the other than conscious to give these suggestions and ideas to this part of our brain that's receptive, that will change, that will take that ball and run with it, you know, make those changes that the conscious mind, you know, wants, but isn't making happen, right? After all, if the conscious mind is all it took to make the changes happen, they wouldn't be in your office, you know, saying, yeah, I really want to quit smoking, but I just can't seem to, everything I try doesn't work, or I want to lose weight, but I can't seem to, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they come into your office to get help. So the idea is that with hypnosis, we get past the conscious mind into the other than conscious mind. So when we tell a story, if we then say, so that means what you need to do is go to the gym every day. Or so what that means is you need to, you know, quit smoking, <laughs> you know, then it's just bringing it right back to your conscious mind. And the conscious mind goes like, yeah, I really should. I should, really should quit smoking. You know, it'll just go right back to where it's been. Nothing changes. Unless maybe there's something that changes. Maybe there's something insight that they hadn't thought of. Maybe there, there can be changes, obviously, often are some little changes that take place. But for the most part, what Dobson's point is, the best 
metaphors, therapeutic metaphors from a hypnotic point of view, is the one that's just outside of the conscious awareness. So the conscious then is going like, hey, wait a minute. What did that mean? Huh, hold, let me think about that. Huh, I wonder if he meant this. I wonder if he meant that. You know, so they start churning on it. The conscious mind is like, you know, the wheels are turning. Wheels are turning throughout the day, throughout the day, throughout the night, while they sleep at night. You know, the wheels continue turning. They keep creating these, you know, transderivational searches in their brain. Dave Dobson referred to going through all the different filing cabinets and cross-referencing the different files in the filing cabinets of your brain. Um, and I think that's I think that's fairly accurate. I think that is what what takes place. And the idea, of course, is that we are not making the change happen in the client. We are facilitating the client to make the change, right? That is kind of, I think, one of the hallmarks of this Ericksonian, neo Ericksonian hypnosis is that it's not about us. It's not about us making change in the person. It's like, oh, I'm going to change the person. I'm going to fix them. No, 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 no. It's about you helping them fix themselves. It's about you creating an environment where they discover the resources that they perhaps have always had, but just hadn't gotten in touch with, and forget about the word perhaps, they have always had, they just haven't gotten in touch with, that allows them to now make that change. We are creating an environment where they can make the change themselves. That's what it is all about. So by doing this, by having them, you know, thinking about it, churning on it, it's creating all these little pathways in their brain that helps them to find the answer for themselves, right? So that's what's the big important distinction is there. So, you know, when I'm doing a coaching, when I have a, a coach, I have a coaching practice and I work with people, there are times when I will, in fact, reveal the advice that's being given. But keeping in mind, knowing full well that when I do that, you know, they're going to be consciously aware of it and they're going to have to, you know, sort things out, make some decisions. And sometimes that's exactly what. I want to have happen, that we want them to work things out consciously, make different decisions, put into different patterns in consciously, right? Then there are other times, even within a coaching session, where I'll simply tell a story and leave it. Tell the story and just kind of leave it. Go like, yeah, right? Right? Yeah. Mm. And they may not express confusion at first. They might just go, yeah, right. Yeah, that's good. Or not. Maybe they'll express a lot of confusion. And I'll say, well, tell you what, why don't you give some thought about that and let me know what you come back with next time. You know, and just leave it churning, leaving it go. Leaving it go. So I think that's a really important thing to recognize, that we want to have our metaphors, our stories, you know, be... Uh, kind of a tipping point, you know, for their unconscious searching, for finding the answers, for finding the changes that they want to make within themselves. And by telling the stories, giving them a foothold, we can do a variety of things. You can always, of course, in a story form, give embedded commands, right? You can't always in a story form give embedded commands. Give a suggestion, give an idea that's more direct suggestion and format, but you know, sort of hidden in. As an example, if I'm telling a story about um, uh, yesterday, I went to the grocery store to to buy a cabbage. I don't know why I'm saying that. I, I've never gone to the grocery store to buy a cabbage in my memory. But let's just say I was going to the grocery store to buy a cabbage. And I tell a story about going to the grocery store and trying to pick out the right cabbage because I really want to make my own homemade coleslaw. I have a hankering homemade coleslaw. So I go to this um, grocery store and I find their their cabbage display. It's a magnificent display of cabbages. <laughs> it's, it's a work of art. You should have seen it. Beautiful display of cabbages. And um, look. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm looking through these cabbages. And I look after one after another, and I'm trying to decide which would be the perfect cabbage to pick for this homemade coleslaw I want to make. And then suddenly I realize that you can make good things out of any material. 
if it's good material. You can do good work with good materials. And I have a realization, right? So my character in the story realizes something. And then you do what we call in the hypno biz, uh, an I, you switch, or a, more technically called a switching referential index. So we switch what we're referring to from I to you. So in my storytelling, I say, I'm looking for cabbages. I have this realization that you can do anything. It's a common turn of phrase. People often say things like, you know how like when you go to this grocery store and you're looking for a good cabbage, it's like people just talk that way. You, 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 you. But we're doing it purposefully because we're trained coaches, we're trained hypnotherapists, right? So we talk, tell a story where it's all about you. And then I had a realization that you can do good work with good materials. That realization is an opportunity for you to give a suggestion. Now, it doesn't have to be a story about you. I could be telling a story about, you know, uh, George, who went to the grocery store to buy a cabbage. And then George had a realization that you can do good work with good materials, right? So it could be about Alice in Wonderland. And Alice realized that you can, you know, whatever, right? So that I, you switch gives you that opportunity. So when the person, the character of the story realizes that or discovers that or finds that or just, you know, any of those kinds of phrases, that, dot, 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 you can do this. It's a way of giving an embedded command. That's another way of taking a story and without the conscious mind necessarily getting involved to make sure that the unconscious mind gets a clear idea of what it is you're trying to get across. It's a way of turning a story that's perhaps just general purpose into a one that's specifically meaningful to your client. So um, this is going to be a rather short podcast this week because, um, frankly, I'm not feeling that good. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if you can tell by looking or hearing. But nevertheless, um, I'm going to keep it rather short. And But uh, uh, if you have interest in this, I do teach courses in Ericksonian hypnosis, neo-Erikssonian hypnosis. You can look on uh, ericksonian.com for things coming up. You can look at essentialcoachingskills.com uh, for things that I have going there. If you're not on my mailing list, get on my mailing list. I, every every week I send out a, a newsletter that is chock-a-block full of good stuff. Well, maybe not chock-a-block, but it's got good stuff. It's got coaching stories in there. Every week I have a coaching story. Um, sometimes they're humorous, joke-wise, because those can be useful, too. I sometimes have sleight-of-mouth tips in there. Um, there's links, links to this podcast. If you've missed one, whatever, there's links to the podcast. There's lots of really good reasons to be on the mailing list. And you might discover that you want to be on that mailing list. So so go to EssentialCoachingSkills.com, sign up, or Ericksonian.com. You can get there, too, from Ericksonian.com. And by the way, there's other good websites as well. There's ericksonian.info, which is kind of a secret thing. There's not very many visits to it. It's been around for a while, but hasn't been marketed very much. Something I put together is just kind of a labor of love. Um, ericksonian.info. It's got lots of good, it is chock-a-block, full of good stuff, articles, transinductions. You can even download trance music for the use of... Uh, in the background of hypnosis recordings that you might do that I created with my good friend, Nick Kemp. So it's free and downloadable. All we ask is that you credit us if you do and do anything with a, you know, a paid for recording. Um, good stuff there. Poems, uh, David Gordon's keynote address that he did for something a long time ago. It's, it's good. Ericksonian.info. Uh, info. And if you ever want to make an appointment with me uh, for whatever reason, you can also do those at uh, DougO'BrienHypnosis.com. So many choices. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for being here today. And I apologize for being a little short, but we'll, we'll make up for it some other time. Thanks a lot for being here. See you again real soon. This has been the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure seeing you again. Hope to see you again real soon. Come back next week when we have another gripping and exciting episode of the Central Coaching Skills Podcast. And if you want to, you can find out more about us 
each and every one of us at EssentialCoachingSkills.com. Thanks. Thanks.